Hello and welcome. This is the Sheep and Oak podcast, episode six. My name is Danielle and I'm a knitter in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I like to read. I'm going to school to be a school librarian right now, along with working full time. And oh, my kitty is trying to escape through the window. One second. Come on, baby girl. You can't do that. <laughs> yeah, so hello. Uh, this is my sixth podcast. I've been podcasting for a little over a year now. I have, this will be my sixth one. And I recently put out a video called Ranking Every Sweater I Have Ever Hand Knit for Myself. And if you saw that, you saw this wonderful sweater. Um, if you haven't seen it, I won't give it away, which which number this one <laughs> was. So I've hand knit eight sweaters for myself um, and I ranked them all and from eight to number one. A little bit about the structure of this podcast. I will start with my finished objects. First what I'm wearing, then my finished objects. And then we'll go into works in progress. And then we will go to books that I've recently read. I also love to read. So <laughs> we'll go to books that I have recently read and loved. So the ones that I've rated five stars on Goodreads since my last podcast. I'll just talk a little bit about those. Then I will do uh, just a small little life update section at the end, talk about what's going on in my life right now. Um, so, okay, let's get going. So my first finished object is what I'm wearing right now. This is the Nakraga sweater by Alice Starmore. It was knit in woolly knit, four ply British wool cone. The color is cinnamon brown. Um, it is 100% British wool. It, I, it is a fingering weight, but I held it double to make it a DK to match the gauge for the sweater. Um, and the needles I used were US 4 or 3.5 millimeters for the ribbing and US 6 or 4.0 millimeters for the body and the arms. And I did the second size. The only modification that I did for the sweater was the ribbing on the sleeves and the body and the collar. So I did a one by one rib instead of what the pattern called for, which was a bit of a cable pattern. Um, I just preferred to have the regular one by one rib. I also really just like how one by one rib looks. Uh, yeah, let me stand up and show you. Maybe you can see the bottom in this and also the um the collar was not a folded collar but i did end up folding it over because i just really like how that looks uh i think it looks very finished and polished when you um when you knit it to be twice the length that you want and then you fold it over and then you stitch it to itself basically you like fold it in yeah there's lots of tutorials on youtube to do that Someone who watched and commented on my ranking every sweater video actually told me that me and the sweater reminded her of the song Cinnamon Girl by Neil Young. And that just made me smile so hard. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'll be a cinnamon girl. Like this color is the color makes me really happy. It's yeah, it's just so unusual. It's not something that I really have a whole lot of in my wardrobe and Knitting with this color, it's just warm and such a natural color of nature. The <laughs> natural, <laughs> a, nat a color that you would find in nature, you know, so that just makes me happy. I'm very uh, drawn to earth tones right now. So I love this sweater very much. It's my cinnamon girl sweater. Thank you to the wonderful viewer who told me that this reminded you of that song. I might. I'll put up your uh, username here. You made me very happy. Okay, we're gonna move on to my next finished object. If you've been here, you know, I'm pretty sure I started knitting this before my second podcast. So, I mean, I was knitting it for over a year. It doesn't even feel like it long enough. Was it two years? No. I was knitting it for a really long time. This is the Greeton sweater by uh, the Western Sisters. And it's the one that I wanted to give to my dad for Christmas last year. And I didn't finish it in time. 
but I was like, it's okay, dad, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you soon. It was a journey. First of all, I, I kept having to unravel because the arms were either too, I think they were too short at first. And then I did it again and they were way too long. And then I realized that the body was too long. I think I re-knit each section like so, so many times. I am so relieved that this sweater is, that this cardigan is done. Um, and I was also putting off for a really long time getting the, the zipper sewn in. I was terrified of doing it wrong. I watched a lot of videos and tutorials. And also I think something that really helped was getting the right zipper for the fabric. So the yarn was um, Knit, Knit Picks Swish DK, um, and it was in Rainforest Heather, and it is a 100% superwash merino. Um, and it, because it's a superwash, it is very heavy and very stretchy. So I was really worried that like, because it was so stretchy and kind of like slouchy almost because of the, um, properties of the superwash yarn i was like i'm going to mess up this um this zipper so i i thought very hard about how it would which kind of zipper would work best i got a very heavy zipper it was a metal zipper um very long actually somehow it was the exact right length for the sweater i was so worried about that too like am i gonna have to cut the zipper like does that work how does that work I did not have to do, worry about that. <laughs> so I got a very heavy zipper to match the heaviness of the fabric. So I think if I got a lighter zipper, it might have done that wonky like um, buckling and curving that sometimes zippers that happen when someone sews a zipper into a knitted fabric, but it did not. It actually, the zipper is perfect and everyone said that it looks really good and my dad loves the sweater. I am, after all the re-knitting and figuring out length and stuff, it is still like way too long for him, but it's okay. It's a home cardigan. He says he wears it, he works from home about once a week. He wears it anytime he's cold at, in the house. He loves it. Like when I came home to go visit them recently, it was just sitting on the couch because he said like anytime he eats, that's what he grabs when he's chilly. I'm so happy about it. But then also like, because it's so stretchy and the, and the fabric stretched out so much, he folds the sleeves back three times <laughs> to make it like the right length on his arm. But he says it's okay because when his hands are cold, he can unravel it or unfold it. And then um, it keeps his hands warm. It, it is my gift to him. And it's a gift to me that he loves it so much. Um, so yeah, that is the Greeton sweater. I'm so happy to be done with it. And so is he. He's been like pestering me about it like forever. It's been a it's been a, a little bit of a family joke about this little cardigan, but it's done and we are all very happy. So he finally got his Christmas gift from last year. I used US size six or 4.0 millimeter needles for the body and US size four or 3.5 millimeter needles for the um, the cuffs. And it is a size large. And the modifications I did was I did not do a thumb hole on the, on the sleeves. And I did not do the scoop butt. I kind of just made a regular flat um, bottom. If I did the scoop butt, it would have ended up being even longer. <laughs> because the Greeton sweater and this Nicaragua sweater took so much time. Like so much time <laughs> to knit. I only have one more finished object um, and that would be underneath my pile of stuff, the Ruska hat by Jessica McDonald. I've been wanting to knit a Jessica McDonald pattern for a really long time. She does incredible color work patterns and I really wanna do a uh, sweater or a cardigan for, from her. I also think that, um, her patterns would look especially good on my mom. So I really wanna make one of them for her. It has been a bit of time since I've knitted her a sweater. So it's maybe next Christmas she can get one or next birthday she'll get a possibly Jessica McDonald 
a sweater. So we'll see. But anyway, so I just knit a hat <laughs> and it was, it's a, it's going to be a gift for, um, one of my band members. I'm in a fiddle band, um, with two other wonderful, genuine, amazing women. And, uh, yeah, they're all, they're, they're both so creative. One of them makes like cut glass art. And then the other one make is a knitter also. Also they're musicians. Just, you know, I really love them. And it's, it's really nice to spend time with um, genuine and creative people and also to make music with them. Uh, we actually have a gig coming up. We're gonna be playing at a bar on December 30th. So that's exciting. And I have to practice <laughs> our songs before then. But anyway, so before our gig, I'm hoping to knit a second one of these to give, so I can give them both a hat. And so that means I'll be probably knitting frantically on Christmas day because <laughs> our rehearsal, our, our next rehearsal is on the 27th. So I would love to give them these then. So I have some knitting ahead of me. But anyway, so this is the Ruska hat. Um, it was knit in Retrosaria. Bruska, um, which is 50% Saloya and 50% Merino. And now I had never heard of Saloya before. So let me read to you a little bit from what um, uh, the, descrip the description of Saloya from, I think it was the Woolly Thistle that I bought this from. On their website, they have a little description of what Saloya is. So let me read it to you. Saloya is the native sheep breed to the region of Lisbon in Setubal. It was it is well documented since the 19th century as its wool was one of the finest available in the country. So I read that and I was like, okay, there's Saloya and Merino. I assume that if this is a fine yarn, and I think I did a little bit more research on it, and it seemed like the properties of the yarn were very similar to Merino. So I was trusting that it would be next to skin soft and not prickly, especially on the forehead, because sometimes foreheads are, I know mine, um, more sensitive to prickly wool. And I think actually that it is not prickly and I'm pretty sensitive. I think it's perfect. So Saloya and Merino work out great together. Um, I love this hat. <laughs> this It feels good. Like I was worried about the size and everything, but I feel like it could fit someone with a bit of a larger head or a smaller head. So I think it would be a perfect gift. <laughs> um, let me tell you the colors. We got um, the blue is 13A. They're not descriptive colors. They're just letters and numbers. Oh, hi, Sally. She wants the little string. I wonder if you can see her. Oh, are you getting it? Are you getting it, little girl? Get the string. Yes, good girl. Come, come. This good girl. <laughs> Hi, baby girl. This is Sally. This is our cat. Yeah, I hope you can see her a little bit. Yeah, I love you too. You're a good girl. Okay, so the colors. <laughs> the 13A is blue. The cream color is A576. And the pink is A583. Yes, okay, I was getting too hot. <laughs> um, I knitted this in a size four needle. I didn't write down, I think I must have done a smaller needle size for the, the rim, brim, the brim, but I didn't write it down. I probably used a two and a half or a two, uh, cause I usually go down a couple sizes to do the, the brim. I'm gonna have to figure that out when I start knitting the next one. Um, yeah, so I really like this. I think that this was an easy, um, Oh, the, the yarn is a worsted weight, so it was pretty quick to knit up. Um, it did take me a little, a little while because I could not figure out what colors I wanted wear. And I originally, I had done the pink in the front 
um, and the blue in the back as the background color. And it did not, <laughs> it, you couldn't really, it was kind of a muddy mess, but I think that this looks actually really a lot better. Yeah, I think it's really nice and I'm excited to gift this. Let's move on to works in progress. Okay. So if you remember, maybe if you were here, last year I tried to knit for my brother a sweater. I knit the Doodle Genser sweater and it did not fit him. So Ben, who is smaller than my brother, uh, ended up getting that sweater and he loves it. So it was a win-win, it was fine. Now Jonathan gets another sweater and yeah, everything's fine. But um, I'm not done with it yet. <laughs> he, My brother is home from Canada, he lives in, he just graduated actually from Memorial University of Newfoundland, MUN. Um, and yeah, he's back for three weeks for Christmas. I haven't seen him yet. He just came back a couple days ago. But he, yeah, he's staying with my, my parents. Um, before he leaves for Canada again, I will have this sweater done. But since it's not a Christmas gift, it's not like necessary to finish it by Christmas. But I will give it to him before he... Sally! <laughs> I will give it to him before... He leaves for Canada. So I'm on the sleeves. Let, let me show you. Okay. It's a big one. I, I made it really big because I was worried about it being too small again. And also he said that he wanted it to be big so it, it would fit him forever. Um, which is nice of him to say and want. Uh, this is the Whiskey Creek Pullover. I'll put up a picture because it's not going to be really easy to tell what, what's going on. It is like a, um, sh I think it's a shawl neck kind of. Yeah, it's a shawl neck. Um, did I say it's the Whiskey Creek Pullover by Amy Christophers. Um, I used Barocco Remix in Pepper. It's a worsted weight and it's a, um, a recycled, all recycled fibers. And it's made up of 30% nylon. 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen slash flax. And I think the way it feels to me is kind of a smooth, cottony feeling, which I like. I think it's it feels really good. And also it makes a fantastic fabric. The sweater that I knitted for Ben, the green and the yellow one that you will see at the end in my little life update section, I will show you some of our engagement photos that I, you know, I had this sweater on in, in those photos. The sweater that he's wearing is uh, knit in this yarn. So I know that the yarn actually holds up really well and is very comfortable, not prickly all of that. So I think my brother will also really like the yarn. Um, okay, so I did a size 44 and a half. The needles were US 5 or 3.75 millimeters for the cuffs and US size 7 or 4.5 millimeter needles for the body. Um, okay, so this is what mine looks like so far. You knit you knit it in the round up to the arm holes, and then you separate front and back. We have the front here. It's kind of hard to show, but this will be the folded over collar up here. And this is gonna be the back. Yeah. Oh, Sally is so interested in strings today. Yes, you are. <laughs> So yeah, the body part is pretty much done and I can't do any more on this until I've, I think I've finished the sleeves. Um, so I'm working on the first sleeve now. And we've got this far. Here I have markers for all of my increases. Not, not here, that's just, uh, I just kind of put a bunch of markers there so I don't have to go rummaging around every time I need one. I just kind of attach them. Um, but yeah, so we got all these increases. I'm using the magic loop method, which is not my favorite, but I have um, all of my short circumference needles are in use. So has to be magic loop. <laughs> um, yeah. So 
So I'm gonna make two of these, obviously, and then attach them to the sweater, and hopefully I can do that within the next two and a half weeks. Wish me luck! Ben just came back from a walk with Danko, so Danko's here now. Danko is my dog. He's a baby. He's looking at me. He's a baby. I know. He looks absolutely ridiculous right now because we are, we, we, he's a doodle. So he needs to be groomed, but to save money, we do it ourselves. But because his fur is so ridiculously thick, it is impossible to keep him brushed. So he gets matted. So all we do to really maintain his coat is let him just grow out. And then every like four months or so, we shave him. But it takes a really long time. He doesn't like it. And we usually split it up in two days. So we started yesterday and we are not done yet. And he has a really fluffy head and front, front legs. But the rest of him is shaved. You'll probably see him. He'll come over. He'll come over eventually. Um, okay, so my next work in progress. I'm very excited about this. This was recommended to me by one of my best friends, Allie. And I'm so happy she, she recommended this and told me about it because I didn't know. And if I didn't know right at the beginning, I wouldn't have done it. This is the Advent Calendar by Arnie and Carlos. Advent Calendar 2023. And we're doing it along with the Advent. Like I, it is the 23rd and I'm about, I've knitted up till the 22nd. So today at some point I'll be knitting the next six rounds. Um, so here it is. If you don't want spoilers, if you're also knitting this and you don't want spoilers, there are chapters in the little, like if you, if you click along the red play bar, you'll see um, chapters. So you can skip to the next chapter. Okay, so here it is. I love it. I've never done an advent calendar knitting before. Oh, here's Danko. His head looks, you could probably only see his head. So it's all this, it's the same, but the rest of him is shaved. He looks very silly. Yeah, okay, bye. <laughs> so this is it. We've got like little people or elves or maybe, I don't know, there's like a little lady with a dress and a guy. And then I think these are like trees maybe, or plants of some sort, and snowflakes. I love this. I've never made a stocking before. Um, this is gonna be for Ben for Christmas. He knows, he's been he's seen me knitting it throughout the whole month, but he doesn't have, we, we do Christmas morning at my parents' house, and he doesn't have his own stocking there. They've always kind of, I can't remember what they did last year, but. Yeah, we all have knitted stockings that my grandma knitted us. And so I'm really happy that I can give Ben a knitted stocking too. This was perfect. So thanks again, Allie, if you're here watching. Thank you. I had so much fun. And it was really fun to just like text with her and be like, oh, the pattern for today is so cute. And like, oh, how are you, how are you going, doing? And both of us were worried about running out of yarn. And it was funny. It was very fun. Um, okay, let me tell you, I actually, and what's also wonderful is that I only use scrap yarn for this. I already had yarn in my stash. <laughs> so it is, the white is Briggs and Little Heritage 2-ply in bleached white. It's an Aran weight, but I think it's more like a bulky weight. It's 100% wool. The, um, the red is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Hollyberry in, um, it's worsted weight. And it's 100% wool. I think maybe you could see him now. He looks so silly. <laughs> the green is a is Stonehenge Fiber Mill Shepherd's Wool Worsted in Hunter Green. It's an Aran weight, and it's 100% merino. Um, yes, so we have an Aran weight or a bulky for the white, a worsted for the red, and an Aran for uh, the green. So I was a little worried that it wouldn't, you know mesh that something would be a little wonky here but no it i think it's perfect there's nothing wrong with the gauge here plus it's like really nice knitting a stocking because it doesn't have to fit anybody it could be any size i just no no uh gauge necessary you just start knitting which was great um i'm i'm using uh us size four needles or 3.5 millimeters and that's all my notes for that so that is yeah 
I'm, I'm pretty proud of this. It's interesting. It's also interesting actually how different each of these sections kind of, the white in these sections looks. So the white is almost, feels like it's almost translucent, translucent because if you can see, hopefully there's enough light you can see. Um, this section is, uh, looks like the, the white looks like pinkish. Like you can see the red coming through the back. And then this looks totally different too. So each of these sections kind of has a different color. With, like the white looks like a different color, you know? Um, again, it is, it's just a stocking. There's no pressure here. It is low pressure. Um, I think it looks honestly great. So highly recommend doing an advent calendar, especially with a friend, because that makes it even more fun. Um, and yeah. Arnie and Carlos, uh, every year I think they do one of these, and I didn't know. So thank you, Allie, again for telling me about it. I have one more work in progress. This is also for Ben, actually, and he doesn't know about this. This is one of the first times I've ever been able to knit something without him knowing, because, you know, we live together, so he's around all the time. It is a hat. This is called Tamarin with Friends, and it is by. Cassandra Harada and it is a free pattern which I like to let you guys know when there's free patterns oh also this is free but only until the end of the month or something so you could once it's once the pattern's all done like you could go in and like download all the patterns if you were interested in knitting this um while it's free because soon it will not be free okay but this one is totally free um it's knit, I knitted it in Knit Picks Gloss DK in black, um, and it Gloss DK. I did not write it down. I do believe, though, if I'm if I'm remembering correctly, it is a 50% silk and 50% merino wool. It is so silky. Uh, it was it is silk, but it is really soft. Um, the softer the yarn, though, the more kind of like fuzzy and pilly things tend to get. So I do feel like it will. Based on what I'm seeing now, it will probably get a little fuzzy and pilly, but that's okay. It's black, you know, it's it's just a, it is a functional knit. I'm really excited for him to have this. I actually knitted him a black hat before that he loved and he ended up losing it, which is okay. I know things get lost, <laughs> but he's getting another black hat. Um, yeah, and he wears his hats all the time, like all during the day, just constantly, so. I'm excited for him to have this and he has no idea. So he's gonna open it up and see it and it's gonna be great. Yay. Um, and I'm at the part where I'm doing the decreases for the brand, for the, is that what that's called? No. What's the top of a hat called? I don't know. For the top of the hat, I'm doing, <laughs> I'm doing the decreases now. Um, yeah, I think it's, I can't really put it on all the way, but I think it's gonna be great. It is a broken rib pattern, but the um, it's it's with a slip slip stitch. So so the knit row is a little bit more prominent because of the slip stitch nature of the pattern. Um, it is really easy, and oh, a, a modification in the pattern they don't have a folded brim, but I know Ben likes folded brims, and also I I like to do folded brims because. Um, it's more there's more of a good chance that it will fit properly because you can like fold it and like pull it down more or fold it less and it'll fit higher up so it's more customizable almost but if you just don't do a folded brim that is how long it is so i always do a folded brim um i believe that's all i have thank you so much for listening um yeah, I don't I don't have as many knit, uh, gifts this year as I usually do. I think it was because of this um, sweater really took up um, so much time. So I did not, I had the intention not to overwhelm myself with gift knits this year. I think I have just the right amount and I'm happy with it. 
And I'm really also excited to be done with all of these works in progress and get going again on some of the other ones that I've been working on. I didn't mention some of the other ones that I have on the needles right this this podcast because I haven't touched them since the last podcast. So I think that's that would be the Jupiter crop in the last long cardigan. Um, it'll be nice to start knitting on those again once I get all of these done. Yeah, so that's my knitting life right now. And let's move on to books. So the recent book that I think is one of my favorites of the year, actually, I told Ben, I was like, this might, this might even beat out Sense and Sensibility as my favorite book of the year. It's gonna be tight. I always like to pick like my favorite book of each month, and then I like to pick my favorite book of the year. Last year it was Fingersmith. Um, it was great. <laughs> and this year, I don't know. It's either gonna be this one, which is Dracula <laughs> or Sense and Sensibility. It's gonna be hard to pick. Mostly because I read Sense and Sensibility at the very beginning of the year, and I just finished this one at the end of the year. So it's hard to compare because it has been a little while. We'll see. I will come up, I will pick, I'll pick one. But as of right now, I don't know. I just thought that this was kind of a perfect book. <laughs> um, it's Dracula by Bram Stoker. Um, and I rated it five stars. I, this is a library book I got from the library. What I really liked about this, it was actually really easy to read. Good boy didn't bark at the people. Oh, oh, there it is. It's okay. It was actually written in 1897, um, which is way later than I thought it was. I thought it was way older. I often read books from this time period and earlier. I'd say my favorite literature is from like Jane Austen. Well, it's, it's British literature from the Regency era through the Victorian. Um, so I guess like Jane Austen to, oh, um, like Thomas Hardy, Henry James also. Yeah, I have this in order, chrono chronological order. So we have um, Thomas Hardy through Henry James and then Edith Wharton, but she's American. Yeah, I really like this. So basically what I'm trying to say is this is my, is smack dab right in the middle of my favorite era of writing. And I didn't know that. I'm like, why didn't I pick this up earlier? Why didn't I read this before? So just having that context, like this was written at the same time as some of my absolute favorite books. Yeah, immediately I was excited. Um, also something that's incredible about this is how quickly the action gets started. So you start, you might know a little bit about Dracula. I didn't know anything about Dracula before this. Um, you get started and you're with Jonathan Harker and he is, he goes to Dracula's castle. And so quickly you are experiencing supernatural things with Jonathan Harker. I love that. Like a lot of times older books, they don't get going, I guess, as quickly. But this one was like, boom, action right from the start. Then it kind of slows down. The middle is pretty um, pretty quick too. It does slow down in the end, but there's something about the way that Bram Stoker takes his time getting to the end that makes it like so emotional. I genuinely love it. The characters are some of my favorite characters of all time. I just recently got a new car and I nicknamed, well, I always like to name my car. <laughs> I named her Wilhelmina after Mina Harker, because she might be one of the best women characters that I've read in a while that I can think of. Well, Celie from The Color Purple was also fantastic, but <laughs> um, yeah, I really like Mina and I really like Van Helsing. Like what a character, man. He is cool. <laughs> he's so smart. He's so empathetic and he's so full of like honesty and caring and Man, he and everyone, there were, there were moments in this that I actually teared up because of just the, the loyalty that the characters have to each other and the passion they have for doing the right thing. 
despite like these incredible dangerous odds i really like this um yeah i recommend it it's really good like i said one of my favorite of the year um so okay let's stop going on about that the next one was an audiobook that i really liked and i actually found it from a i went back so i got an english degree in the university of toronto I was thinking, you know what, I'd like to see what they're reading now in classes these days. So I went onto the course website and I took a look at some of the syllabi and I found a bunch of books that really like interested me. So this was one of them. Um, it's Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. I really liked this. This was, it was a quiet, understated book and it was about women in England in the 1950s. And you see, it's kind of, it was kind of like the start of feminism. Not that it, you know, it wasn't the real start of feminism. Like, I mean, we had Jane Austen, <laughs> but it was, feminism was ramping up, especially like in England. It's about like a very religious church going, very moral woman who is kind of having to come to terms with like, what that means in her life, what it's what it is, what it means to be an excellent woman. Um, and the ending was honestly shocking, totally unexpected ending. I thought for sure the whole time I thought I knew how it was going to end. And then the end kind of like, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, that's what we were leading to. Okay. <laughs> but I no, I didn't. I liked it. And I think the writing was funny. It if you're looking for a book that feels like Jane Austen, kind of society, high society comedy of manners, um, Barbara Pym. I'm going to read more books by her for sure. This was one of her more um, popular ones. So I did really like it. Um, okay. And the next one, this was recommended by the YouTuber Emmy. Um, her name is Emma and I watch all her videos. I really like her. <laughs> and she loved this book. She kept recommending it multiple times. So I've had it on my to read list and I didn't want to read it until winter because it is called Winter in Sokcho. Sokcho is a place in South Korea that is right on the border of South and North Korea. Um, so it deals with tourism. It deals with um, loneliness. It deals with self image. Um, family relationships, um, art, what it means to be an artist. It really is a quiet, contemplative little book. It is a bit unsettling too, actually, um, you know, it, like in, in a quiet, understated way, but like some of the things that the main character does or says, sorry if you're jiggling Danko is my doggy is just wiggled the stand a little bit. Um, uh, I really, really genuinely like this. And I read it really quickly. It is very short. Um, the, pa the writing, like the pages are uh, not a whole lot of text on a page. There's a lot of blank pages. Yeah, there's a lot of blank space in the book. And it is only 156 pages long. So yeah, I read this really quickly. It really puts you in a place in a time. You, you experience what it's like to be in winter in Sokcho. And the language is beautiful. It was actually written in French and translated to English. I think it was translated to six languages from French. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it's very beautiful. The sentences are short, they are punchy. The main character is told from the first person's perspective, and we don't know the main character's name. Um, you just, I really did. I felt so much kinship for this main character. Like this was how I felt when I was younger too. And even sometimes now, like a lot of the things that are happening and you feel for her and you see the way that what she's observing is impacting her and her mental state and her feelings. Um, yeah, you just get a really good in-depth view in a very short amount of time of this girl's life in Sokcho. I really like it. And, um, yeah, so that's Winter in Sokjo. Those are the books that I wanted to talk about. And quickly, oh, I forgot to mention in the beginning, I also like to do a little bit of a recommendation section. So I'll just talk a little bit about some YouTube channels that I've been loving recently. Um, Ruby Granger has been great for my 
school motivation. She really helps me romanticize studying, which I need to do or else I won't do my homework. <laughs> well, I will, but I'll do it angrily. I'd rather be doing it joyfully. <laughs> Instead of just working hard and getting through, I would much prefer to at least romanticize it and feel a little bit better about all the time that I'm spending doing homework and readings and essays. So it's helping a lot. Watch, so watching people who genuinely love to study and love to write essays and to read is really helpful. And she is currently a master's student in Oxford. So she's studying literature, which again, obviously I love. So I love to hear what she has to say. And I love to see Oxford from her perspective. It's very special. So recommend Ruby Granger. And then also Kat Weaver. I really love her. She is a knitter and she does knitting podcasts, but she also has been branching out recently and doing other kinds of content. Like um, recently she did a just a very casual conversation with a indie dyer and that was really special. Um, and she's also really into D&D, Dungeons and Dragons, which I also am very into. She watches and loves Critical Role, which is a um, Dungeons and Dragons um, podcast video type thing. I've never watched it. I keep wanting to. I've only watched the first episode, but not even all the way through. I think it's hard to get into, but I mean, apparently, according to her and many millions of other people, it is so very worth it. So I will be trying again, I think, soon to watch that. Also, because I really want to play, pick, play D and D again. It's been a really long time. I used to be a dungeon master too, which is called DMing, um, and it was fun and it was it was really nice. And it's nice to spend time with uh, friends like that and be imaginative. Plus, my fiance Ben is now running a D and D campaign for work. He is a teacher, and yeah, he's really liking it, and all the kids are really liking it. So. I don't know. I'm I'm interested in starting that again. So Cat Weaver is very inspiring in that way as well. We are going to move on to my little bit of a life update. Nothing too in depth right, to right now. Really, I just kind of finished my my fall semester recently. That was good. I got straight A's again. I've I have straight A's uh, all through my masters. I've been getting A's. So which is way better than my undergrad. Undergrad was a struggle for me. Uh, I was just not in a good place mentally, physically, like it was a struggle. But I've been doing really, really well in my master's and I have about one year left. That just takes up most of my time. Um, yeah, so I, we also went on vacation. Ben and I went on vacation. We went to Tucson, Arizona for a friend's wedding. Um, instead of just going flying all the way out to Arizona for a weekend or for a Saturday wedding, we made it a vacation and we stayed for a week. We went horseback riding, we went hiking, we visited the um, the library, the main public library in Phoenix also, which was really cool. And it's going to be a new tradition for us when we go on vacations to go visit the main libraries because I want to be a librarian <laughs> and I get inspiration from the way that other people set up their libraries and it just the architecture is so beautiful. And yeah, I want to see every main library that I can. And that was, that was really fun. That was a good vacation. Um, and what else? We had our engagement photo shoot, which was what I knitted this for. Um, I finished it the morning of the photo shoot. Uh, it was a struggle, but I did it. I finished it in time. So I will actually put up a couple pictures just right here of our photo shoot. Um, the photographer is Chase Images. So if you are in the Pennsylvania-ish area, he is fantastic. Um, he does it with his wife and they are really, really good. We had a great time with them and they're going to be photographing our wedding as well, which is in August this year, finally. Um, it's been a long engagement, mostly because we've been just so busy and I've been in school and I didn't want to rush it. So we took our time with the wedding planning, which has been really nice. And just being engaged for a while is nice too. So that's, yeah, those are my <laughs> engagement photos. They're very cute. I'm excited for them. I can't wait to just like print some out and like 
you know, put them all over my house. <laughs> um, and then the last thing I wanted to say is like, it, the holidays are coming. I hope that this joyful time is treats you well because I know it can be very stressful too. Like I said in the beginning, it is I, I have a, it is a busy time of year. It's when all your friends come home for the holidays, or you know you have to travel to see all your different different sides of your family, um, and just people expect a lot of you. And also, gift giving can get out of hand. <laughs> I know I always let it get out of hand. Don't expect too much of yourself. Don't put too much pressure on yourself is what I've been at least trying to tell myself. Just enjoy, uh, enjoy the holidays. Um, and I asked, actually, I want to ask a question, a real quick question. So I love to hear about people's holiday traditions. For example, my parents started doing this when we were little kids. Um, we have a family elf that comes and gives us pajamas every Christmas Eve. So every Christmas Eve, right before bedtime, um, my family, my mom will read us, um, "Twas the night before Christmas. And while she's reading that, there's a knock on the door. <laughs> and then all the kids run out to the front door and there is there are three presents. I have two siblings. There are three presents on the front doorstep that Snowball the Elf has left for us. And we run back inside and unwrap and every time there's always a little note from Snowball saying that he's proud of us for something we've accomplished or like just just a little bit of a note for for us personally. Hi, editing Danielle here. Turns out my video got cut off there at the end. I don't know what happened, no explanation. Just that's it, that's all that, that I recorded apparently. Um, I just was about to ask what are some of your holiday traditions because to be honest, Ben and I are talking about starting a family very soon. And so we'll probably be making new traditions, keeping old ones, just Something about making new traditions to me is just like very wholesome <laughs> and I can't wait um, to do that. So give me some ideas. Let me hear about what you guys do. Uh, what are some from your childhood that you kept or what are some new ones that you do with your new families um, or with your friends? Anything. Um, I'm just. Yeah, I'd be happy. I'd be happy to hear about it. So. Uh, that's all. Um, I just hope that you guys have a fantastic holiday season um, and happy knitting, happy reading, and thanks again for being here. Bye-bye!